Today I'm going to be looking at John chapter number two, verses number one through verse number five. Aww. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Now both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. And when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. Jesus said to her, woman, what does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, whatever he says to you, do it. Do it. Today I'm talking about mothers above and beyond. No one deserves special recognition or, or a special day to herself other than mothers. Mothers are defined literally as one who gives birth to a child or, or to children. But whether you use, you use that term literally or metaphorically, mothers are still the bomb, the stuff, the boss with the hot sauce. <laughs> and if you're blessed to have a mother and have had a mother, and I think we all do, let's just give mothers a big round of applause just for God allowing them to be in our, in our lives. If you had a mother like mine who could see around the walls and <laughs> hear through concrete. <laughs> my mother was always there. I remember when I was growing up, my mother, one thing I remember, my mother was always home. We would, we would always want mama to leave so we could have the house to ourselves, but she was always home. And the way my mom punished us is she would find something that we want to watch on TV and then she would make us do chores. We're sitting there on Saturday morning, and all of a sudden, Soul Train comes on. Yeah. Oh, man, Soul Train. And then my mother said, OK, it's time to do Oh, Mom, that's the hippest trip in America. You know, but that's what she would do. She would punish us when we wanted to watch something she wanted to watch. Now, one of the first transitions that mothers make is, is when you grow up and you you married, and they become the mother-in-law. Yes, the mother-in-law. Now, all mother-in-laws are not bad. See, I just, I lucked out. I lucked out. Huh? <laughs> mother in law, yeah, she's right here. <laughs> Three guys were asked, what would you do if you had six weeks to live? Well, one guy says, well, I would take a trip around the world and go as many places as I could given the time frame that I had left. The second guy says, I would get all of my friends together and we would celebrate and I would let them know how much they mean to me and how much I. I care for them. The third guy says, I would move in with my mother-in-law. I said, well, why is that? He said, that would be the longest six weeks of my life. <laughs> I want to start out first by talking about a mother's heart. A mother's heart in Isaiah chapter 66 and verse number 13. As a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you. God has designed the heart of a mother to be a reflection of his own heart. Moms have a tough job. You're the taxi care driver. You're the one who gives up sleepless nights, the one who makes the sacrifices, the one who's always there. It's a thankless job, and it oftentimes goes unrecognized. But the heart of a mother continues to love and care beyond herself. In 2 Timothy chapter number 1 and verse number 5, Scripture says, When I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I'm persuaded is in you also. The grandmother and mother of Timothy was the one that taught him the fear and admonition of the Lord, the one that raised him up, the ones that helped to nurture him toward the calling that God has on his life. It was the grandmother and mother that allowed Timothy to be the man that we know and the one who wrote first and second Timothy. And even at the beginning of scripture, it was Jesus' mother at the wedding that prompted Jesus into his ministry. They're out of wine, she says. And, and Jesus said, what, what, am I, what does that have to do with me? And she told the servants, do whatever he tells you to do. Mothers know when we are prepared. And sometimes the most difficult task, you may not understand it, is when a mother has to move you forward. Because you'd want to stay close to mom because mom makes everything easy for you. My mom nurtured me and she, she, I would still be there if my mother was alive. She would, she always, I always knew I had a place to go home to. But the greatest value and honor I could give my mother is to be the best person that I can be. And 
The way you honor your parents is be the best you that you can be. There's no greater honor that we have than that. Because deep down, mothers know one thing, that what matters most in life is not just you, but true mothers know that every child deserves their very best. A true mother will see every child in the neighborhood as being a child that she's responsible for. I grew up with that village mentality, where if you got in trouble, every mother along your way home got, got on to you. But <laughs> every mother would admonish you, and every mother had the same authority that your mother had. If you were at somebody else's house and you did something, their mother got on you. And by the time you got home, they've called your mom, and it's twice as bad. I want to talk about the next point is a mother's choice. A mother's choice. And she also rises while it is yet night and provides food for her household and a portion for her maid servants. She opens her mouth with wisdom and on her tongue is the law of kindness. She watches over the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. A mother chooses to see the good in every situation. Even when you're not good, your mother sees something good in you. When you're being disrespectful or you're doing something that's contrary to the way that you were raised, your mother believes that somehow you're going to come back to where she has trained you to be. Because the Bible is true when it says, train up a child in the way that he or she should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. So mothers never give up hope on her children. No matter how bad, no matter how your search circumstances is, she always depends on God to bring them back and to bring them back home. A mother's choice. She chooses to see the best in every situation. A man's work is from son to son. But a mother's work is what? <laughs> is never done. That's true. I want to give some advice to fathers for a moment. If you're uh, married and, and sometimes fathers will get gifts for their their mother of their children. And I want to share with you some things not to get. <laughs> Don't get appliances or anything that plugs in. It tends to suggest she could be more useful around the house. <laughs> Don't get her a six month membership to a weight loss clinic or to a health spa. It implies that she may be unattractive and, and not what she should be. Don't buy clothing with sizes. Because the chances are one in 10,000, you'll bring the wrong size home. Don't buy jewelry because the jewelry that your wife wants, you can't afford. And the jewelry that you can afford, she don't want. And finally, don't spend too much. Because she'll say, you know we can't afford this. Don't spend too little. She'll, she'll say, you cheapskate. This all you think I'm worth? But the best gift that you can give your, the mother of your children is to see your children love their mother and be the best father and the best husband that you can be. That's a gift that they can give to their mother and, and to their children. And that's a gift that continues to go down from generation to generation. Can I get an amen on that? I think that's true. Love, love the mother of your children. And lastly, a mother's time. A mother's time. Genesis 24 and verse 6 to 7. Then Isaac brought her, which means Rebekah, into his mother Sarah's tent. And he took Rebekah, and she became his wife, and he loved her. So Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. Isaac brought Rebekah to his mother. And one of the things that any bride to be is always anxious about meeting the mother. There's a lot of pressure. Will your mother like me? The approval of the mother is very sincere because that allows the mother to be confident knowing that another mother will nurture her grandchildren and that she can pass on her blessing to another generation. So the mother of the, of the, of the children of the, of the bride is, is very critical and crucial to a mother. I was telling you before that one guy brought a he was dating, brought a woman home, and his mother hated her. And he ended up breaking up because his mother didn't approve. And then he met another woman who was the woman of his dreams, and he thought his mother would approve, and his mother didn't like her either. 
Finally, he found a woman that was a spitting image of his mother. I mean, they were from the same part of the country. They laughed alike. They wore their hair alike. They had similar accents. They dressed alike. He took her home, and his father hated her. <laughs> so you can't please everybody. When mothers become grandmothers, and God's blessed them see their great-grandchildren, and sometimes their great-great-grandchildren, and it becomes time when mothers go, because there's a transition that we'll all make. And one of the most difficult for us is to part with a person that's meant so much to us from the beginning. From the moment your eyes opened, you saw your mother. And you have this attachment to her, but there's a point to when she'll transition to go home with the Lord. But the beauty of it is the mothers always are looking down upon us. And they're always there. They're that gentle voice that we hear with every need, with every sunlight, every moment, every morning, if you still, you still hear the voice of your mother. There's still reminders that she's there and she still loves you. As I close, a teenager came into the kitchen one evening and his mother was cooking dinner. And he slipped a piece of paper onto the counter. And the mother stopped to look at what it was. The little boy sat alongside to see the mother's response to what he had written. And the note said, cutting grass, $10. Cleaning my room all week, $5. Running errands, $2. Two hours of babysitting, $10. Taking out the garbage, $2. Maintaining good grades, $5. Total owed, $34. The boy studied his mother's response to mother took a pen out of her apron and began to turn the paper over and wrote on the other side. And when she had finished, she put the paper down and went back to what she was doing. The boy anxiously went over to see what the mother had written. The mother said, nine months of pregnancy, no charge. Late night feedings, no charge. Diaper changes, no charge. Potty training, no charge. Bandaging scrapes and scratches, no charge. Bedtime stories, no charge. Doctor and dental visits, no charge. Taxi service, no charge. Academic tutoring, no charge. Seasonal cheerleading, no charge. Hugs and encouragement, no charge. Etiquette training, no charge. Food procurement and meal preparation, no charge. Clothes, toys, and et cetera, no charge. Total owed, no charge. Go ahead, go ahead. Let's give, let's give. <laughs> when the boy looked up from the paper with tears in his eyes, he took the pen and he turned the paper over and he scribbled, paid in full. He hugged his mother and says, Mom, I love you. No one will ever understand the sacrifices that a mother makes and what goes into the making of a mother. It's one of the most challenging jobs. She's engineer, she's housekeeper, she's medical attendant, she's your nurturer, your cheerleader. And when you look back, you may not have had the perfect mother, but you may not have been the perfect child either. <laughs> Maybe if mama had something better to work with. <laughs> But one thing that we can do is we can thank God for the memories. I remember Barbara Streisand, and in one of her songs, she says, so it's the laughter. We remember when we remember the way we were. When you think about your mother, it's the memories, it's the good times. Think about all the things that she was there for you. When you came home, there were certain things that were prepared for you. Your mother went out of the way to make sure that you had the best. And You'll never understand the sacrifices that your mother made to make sure that you are a priority. And when you want to leave home because you want to get away from your mother and your father, it broke your mother's heart because she thought that she did all that she could. And sometimes we've never come back and let mama know how much we really, really care. But she knows. She knows. In every way that you can, even if your mother may not be around, honor your mother. 
Continue to be the best you that you can be. Remember the words that she gave you. Remember the encouragement that she made. And remember that your mother is always the best person and most important person in your life.